What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I wanna to show you my 6K Mac Pro setup. I have the Nano Edge Pro Display XDR. I skipped the $1,000 stand and went with the Vesa mount adapter. It's a clean but powerful setup. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's go ahead and get started. My last setup had the 49 inch ultra wide monitor. It actually works great with the Mac Pro, but I wanted to try the Pro Display XDR to complete the setup. It's a 32 inch 6K display that can get up to 1600 nit peak brightness. This is perfect for content creation. It has a million to one contrast ratio and Y color gamut. This is nano etch, so this is Apple's version of anti-glare. It works really well. Here it is next to the glossy iMac Pro, and you can see the difference here right away. It does a fantastic job at reducing glare. The only downside is that you do lose that color pop that you get from a glossy display, and you do lose a bit of viewing angle because of this, but I'm really enjoying it so far, and don't regret going with the nano etch version. As I said earlier, I skipped the $1,000 stand. Apple's vase mount was super easy to install. The build quality matches the display and it's magnetic. It just clips on and then you just turn it with the key that was included and that is literally it. I love this display because it just takes one Thunderbolt 3 cable. That's all it takes. Three more USB-C ports there as well. I'm really thinking about getting a second display for a twin 6K setup. Let me know if you wanna see that. If you have a 16 inch MacBook Pro and wondered if it can power the new Pro Display XDR, it can beautifully at full 6K resolution and also gets that full 96 watts of power from the display. So this is also a sweet, sweet setup. The monitor arm I've been using is from Human Scale. I've been using this monitor arm all year. Absolutely no problem holding this monitor up. I can also flip it and put it into portrait rotation if I want to and it switches automatically. So this is a nice feature since it'll give me options. I have the M-Power charging station for the monitor arm. This is perfect for convenient charging on my desk. There are two USB-A ports and also one USB-C port. Perfect for that braided USB-C to lightning cord that comes with the Mac Pro to charge the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard and Magic trackpad aren't new in terms of design, but you do get a new color scheme, a silver and black version of both. They come in the box with the Mac Pro if you configure it that way. I do still have the space gray ones from the iMac Pro, but I like these as well. It matches the new Mac Pro very well. I was honestly on the fence about buying the new Mac Pro because this is totally overkill for a normal content creator like myself. This is for sure more of a luxury buy for me, a total want over a need, but I'm gonna tell you some of the reasons why I went for the new Mac Pro after a word from today's sponsor. Whenever I buy a new Mac, the first thing that I do is install Bitdefender Total Security 2020. There's a big misconception that Macs don't need protection against malware, and that's absolutely not true. There have definitely been some decent vulnerabilities that have hit the Mac in the last few years. Bitdefender Total Security 2020 will not only keep your computer safe with an easy to use interface, you can scan anytime. It helps you safely browse the web with anti-phishing and protects your information for safe online transactions. And it also comes with a built-in VPN, which is very important for me because I travel all the time. Public Wi-Fi connections can be risky, so having this built into my devices gives me that ultimate peace of mind. What's great is that it works with Macs, PCs, laptops, smartphones. It's an all-in-one solution, so why not give it a try for free? I'll leave a link down below for you. I think you're going to love it. So the reason why I decided to buy the Mac Pro for the new office setup is basically this. This is the dream Mac that I've been wanting forever. The case just pops off and easily reveals all of the components inside, eight PCI Express expansion slots, basically everything is upgradable in here, including the processor, the GPU, the SSD, and RAM. So this machine should grow with me as the years go on. I ended up with the 16 core Xeon W, kept the RAM at 32 gigs because I'm going to upgrade it myself, bumped the storage to four terabytes and got a single Radeon Pro Vega 2. This is plenty of power for editing high resolution video. I skipped on the afterburner card because I don't work with the raw workflow right now. So when I get into ProRes raw, I'll look into it. It was expensive for sure, but I felt like this was the best bang for buck configuration at launch. I decided to keep it underneath the desk because this machine is large and while it is a showpiece, I thought it looked weird on the desk itself. It is whisper quiet, even when it's at full load, you can't hear anything and editing video on the setup is an absolute dream so I can't wait to use it more because this is a dream setup for a Final Cut Pro editor. The one thing that I wish the Apple included was an SD card slot at the top of the machine. There are two Thunderbolt 3 ports at the top, which are super handy, but an SD card slot there would have been cool, so I don't have to do this. 
For those of you that are new to my setups, the desk is still the BDI Central Lift. It's a clean sit and stand desk that has a beautiful satin etched glass finish on top. I have the optional drawer unit that I love and place a Nomad wireless charger in there to charge my phone while I'm working. I love this little hack. I use it every day. I absolutely love this desk because my cable management is so easy since it's basically all built in. While I can't hide every single wire, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. There is a Philips Hue light strip on the back, but I only use it when I want some ambient lighting. It is a cool way to switch things up. I have the human scale Nova lamp on the corner. This is the clamp version for a cleaner look. It's motion activated and has nice touch sensitive controls on the top. The chair is still the Fortis World by Human Scale. Love the white frame and the mesh is extremely comfortable and airy. It matches so well with the setup and the color scheme. I love it. Last but not least, I still have my headphone setup. Still my two favorites are the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pro and the Sennheiser HD 800S. And it's powered by the Woo Audio WA7 Fireflies tube amplifier. And also on a Woo Audio all metal headphone stand. I've been using this for years and it's been a solid audio setup. So there is my Mac Pro 6K setup tour. I hope you enjoyed it. There's one thing missing and that's external audio. I really need some studio monitors. So please give me some suggestions in the comments below since the Mac Pro's internal speaker sucks. I use headphones mostly, but I would love to get some speakers on top of this desk. So let me know what you suggest that will look good with this setup. You might see a modified version of this with dual Pro XDR displays coming soon. I need to use the single display first to see if I even need a second display. Let me know what you think about this desk setup, subscribe for a lot more videos like this and on the Mac Pro, review dropping soon and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.